Hi guys, so we're actually going to do things a little bit differently and I'm going to share my weigh in update now because I really just want to dive into this topic. It's why you clicked this video. So um, I am happy to report that I am officially back to where I was before taking my four week set bound break and gaining holiday weight. So I weighed myself this morning and I was 144.2. And that's basically what I was, as I mentioned, right before um, the holiday weight gain. So in December 4th, I think it is, I was 144.5. So I feel like we're even, we're good. I feel like the slate has been wiped clean and I'm so ready to just continue the rest of my weight loss journey. So another thing I want to mention is that I forgot to say in um, last week's video, which is if you missed it, if you want to find out why I took the break and how that went, you can take a look at that. I won't get into it here. Um, I'll link it for you in the description box, but I forgot to mention that I decided to stick with five milligrams. So basically after my break, I guess I could have gone up to 7.5 or tried five milligrams again. And that's just what I decided to do. It just felt right for me. So anyhow, protein. We all know how important it is. We keep hearing everybody talk about protein, protein, protein. So I don't think there's any one of us that is on a GLP-1 medication that doesn't realize how important protein is. And if you're just starting your journey and you're just tuning into me and you maybe you're not even on um, any GLP-1 medication and you're thinking about it, yes, protein is extremely, extremely important to prevent muscle loss. So I've done different videos on um, Zepbound myths. And one of them is that it causes muscle loss. It does not cause muscle loss. Weight loss causes muscle loss. And so this is why it's so important to make sure that you're getting enough protein to kind of um, offset that. Um, what I do is it's a very simple calculation. You can go online and find, you know, different ways of calculating how much protein you need. I just use a very simple method, which is one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. So I believe my ideal body weight is about 130 grams. I'm sorry, 130 pounds. So I eat 130 grams of protein. That's what I aim for. Not always perfect with that, but I feel like if I aim for 130 and I fall short, I'm still getting in at least 100 grams of protein. I feel like if I aimed for anything less than that, like 100 grams of protein, if I fell short of that, I would probably only get like 75. That's just me. But you know, you can figure it out online. That just is like an easy way of doing it. And I, you know, like I said, I don't always get that. I don't always hit that mark. But on average, I for sure have about 100 grams of protein. I would say between 100 and 130 grams of protein a day. Now, you can hit your protein goal every single day. Like you could be perfect at it every single day. But I hate to break it to you that still won't be enough for your body to hold on to that muscle. Of course, your body needs protein to build muscle and repair muscle, but there has to be a reason for your body to hold on to the muscle. Like just eating enough protein is not telling your body that the muscles you have are valuable and to leave them alone, right? So you could be eating all the protein. You, you could be perfect with that. If you're not using your muscle, you're not signaling to your body that they're important, that you're not signaling to your body that they need to protect and preserve those muscles. So it really is as simple as use it or lose it. And they have done numerous studies on this. And some studies show that up to 40% of weight loss can come from muscle. And that is not what we want. We, we don't want to be losing our muscle mass. And the reason for that is because muscle burns fat. And think think of your muscle as like a furnace right you want to keep that fire going because that fire is what's going to burn the fat if you're not using your muscle then that fire that furnace is kind of burning you know at a very low heat and it's not really going to be doing a whole lot to burn fat so muscle is what keeps your metabolism going so your metabolism isn't this magical thing that you know runs fast when you're young and slows down when you're older i'm sure we've all said or heard people say that your metabolism slows as you get older well there is a reason for that 
as you age, you naturally just lose muscle mass, but also you tend to become a little more sedentary. And so again, use it or lose it. You're not signaling to your body that you need these muscles. And so your body is just paring down what it thinks it doesn't need. And it does that by lowering your basal metabolic rate. So the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn. The less muscle you have, the less calories you burn. So remember, muscle burns more calories than fat does. So you could be at the beach relaxing or just sitting in front of the TV, you know, not really doing a whole lot, but you're continuing to burn calories. And if you don't have a lot of muscle, it's just not going to be the same. And this is why it's much harder to lose weight as you get older, because typically when you get older, you have less muscle mass. And this is one of the biggest reasons why people will lose a significant amount of weight, but then they'll they'll hit a plateau and they just can't get past that. Like they hit a wall and they just can't continue or maybe they even start gaining some of the weight back. And you've probably seen that and you've probably even experienced it. It's, it's very hard and very frustrating. It really isn't about calories in, calories out at that point. It really truly is about protecting your muscle so that you can protect your metabolism. You need to have that furnace going and burning nice and hot so you can continue to burn fat. So the other day I came across an article, it just popped up right on my Google homepage and I'll link it in case you want to take a look at it. But basically scientists have discovered this new protein called BCL6 and it plays a huge role in preserving your muscle, like preventing muscle loss. And so they did this study, I think it was the Salk Institute, I forget, I'll, I'll link it. And they found that when mice had low levels of this hormone, um, not hormone, this protein, the BCL6 protein, they lost a huge amount of muscle. But when they were given BCL6, like in high doses, that muscle loss was actually able to be prevented. So of course, with GLP-1 medications being very, very popular and a lot of people taking them suffering from muscle loss, they're trying to figure out a way of making this available to for GLP-1 users to prevent that muscle loss that is so critical. I have no idea when this is going to be available to humans. Maybe they'll start adding it into the shots. Maybe it'll be its own shot or who knows. Either way, it is way, way, way down the future. It is not anything that's happening anytime soon. And so the only way as of right now that you can signal to your body to hold on to that muscle is by strength training. So yes, eat your protein absolutely eat your protein but you need to strength train and i have never wanted to come across as being preachy and so i've always just encouraged movement of any kind and i still do think that that's important but i think you're really doing a disservice to your body long term if you're not strength training and honestly this is something that people should do regardless of whether they're on a weight loss journey or not it's just important especially as we age we know that strength training builds stronger bones which can protect us from injury as we get older we know that strength training increases insulin sensitivity and there's just so many benefits of strength training if you're on a weight loss injection zepbound wagovi manjaro ozempic semaglutide terzepatide whatever it is please i beg of you if you are not strength training already to highly consider starting protein alone is not enough to save you from muscle loss it just it just isn't enough and so yes eat your protein but you have to strength train and i have been i've talked about dr tina moore several times in my videos um i'll link her channel if you've never heard of her but she has a youtube channel and one of the biggest things that she is constantly harping on is strength training and in her words this is not negotiable if you want to go on glp1 agonist and have any semblance of success in the long run you have to protect your muscle at all costs she really feels that if you're not committing to strength training, then you have no business being on a GOP-1 medication. And the reason for that is because these medications can 
decrease your appetite so much so especially if you're on a very high dose or you're moving very quickly with on the dosing schedule that you could lose a significant amount of muscle loss right ozempic butt ozempic face and so she's really really big on preserving your muscle mass by strength training and I'm not going to pretend that I had my act together from the very beginning. I did not start strength training until uh, I think it was four months into my weight loss journey. Um, I'm pretty sure I did my walking challenge in April and May. So it was on my third month. I started strength training on my third month, but I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I didn't wait any longer. And part of the reason why I put it off for so long was not because I didn't know how important it was because I found Dr. Tina from the very beginning. And so I knew that strength training was important. The reason why I put it off is because I just didn't know where to start. I had never strength trained in my life. Anytime I was on a weight loss journey, it was always cardio. I never did anything with weights. And so I just felt so like, like a fish out of water. And I, I got hung up on not knowing what exercises to do, or more importantly, actually, it was what size weights to start at. Like, I just, I didn't know. And I let that go on for two months before I finally just decided to jump in. And that's what I wanna encourage you to do, to just jump in. It's not gonna be perfect you're going to make mistakes but if you don't start then you're not going to make any progress it's just so important and i know i keep saying this but honestly the more muscle you have the more fat you burn the more energy you have and the better you'll look and feel so i think it's important to think of it as like a self-care thing and not so much as a punishment now i know some of you are thinking no not for me i have bad knees i don't have time i don't like it i don't want to get bulky i, I hear you <laughs> i really do first of all you're not gonna get bulky you're just not it takes an incredible amount of effort to get like that and you have to be in a calorie surplus anyway you're 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 not gonna get bulky you're going to look better and you're going to get toned up, but you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to wake up and look like a bodybuilder. Another thing that holds people back is that they, they just don't want to join a gym. They don't want to pay a membership for a gym. And, and I get it. I, I don't want to join a gym. Like even if I had money for a gym membership, I still would not join a gym. I really just enjoy working out at home. So my recommendation is that you can absolutely strength train at home without a large you know variety of of weights i would say start small and if you're truly 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 just beginning body weight exercises are the way to go you can do that for a week or two till you get familiar with the moves and you know you have your form you know it's maybe not going to look perfect but you have a better idea of what you're doing before introducing weights and you don't have to spend a ton of money on weights either i would say if you start at five and 10 pounds. That's a very good starting point for most people. And it's not going to be, it'll be cheaper than a gym membership. And it's really not going to be all that expensive. And over time, you can add in um, more weights. I think if you start at five and 10 pounds, you'll be good for a while. And then you could always get the 15 and 20 pound weights. Um, there's a lot of different options. They have adjustable weights so that you don't have to jump up in five pound increments. You could do it gradually, like two pounds or two and a half pound increments. It's up to you, but I would say don't get overwhelmed by all the choices. Just buy a five, like five pound dumbbell set and a 10 pound dumbbell set. Strength training doesn't have to be scary or intimidating. There are tons of YouTubers that put out um, beginner strength training programs. My personal favorite is Strong Sisters United. I started with her and I really enjoyed her workout. I've also mentioned her many, many times. She has a playlist that is perfect for 
Um, like if you, if you struggle with knee pain, it doesn't have like lunges or anything crazy. And again, just start with body weight until you get comfortable and you build up a little bit more strength. It actually happens sooner than you think. So I hope I'm not coming across like I'm coming down on you if you're not strength training. I'm really not, but I just know how important it is. And I know that for long-term success, this is the key. I'm not saying skip out on your cardio and maybe you enjoy walking and you know i'm not saying don't do that i'm just saying you really do need to strength train so i am going to link a couple of videos in case you find this topic interesting of other videos that i've seen um, that can explain this more scientifically than than i've been able to do but i really hope i've given you some food for thought and if you are not strength training let me know in the comments what it is that's holding you back i'm just i'm just curious so thanks for spending some time with me today guys and i'll see you at the next one bye